there RPG makers, it is I, Titan Hex, and I'm back with another tutorial. So last time we went over the selectors uh, in the selector tutorial, uh, where we were going over making a picture menu ourselves. So a picture menu uh, can do a whole bunch of things. I've used them to create custom skills, a skill menu where you can turn uh, off and on skills and buy skills um, using points and stuff like that. Um, I've also created a custom battle system where you can choose what you're using, uh, using a custom menu. Uh, you can create a skill tree using a menu and you can do a character select system using a menu. Today we're going to be going over a very simple character select menu. Um, it's good to start with a foundation. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things you need to do and a lot of things you need to know in order to make a more complex system. So we're going to go ahead and do a simple system to start. So um, first things first, we want to uh, make sure that we have a common event called. Um, we want to understand certain things uh, about the system we're making as well. So first you need to understand variables. Make sure that you go over my variable tutorial and that you practice and under make sure you understand variables and what they do. Um, the next thing is we want to understand pictures, how to show pictures, tint pictures, move pictures. The whole system, the whole menu that we're making is graphics based and pictures are, and being able to update and change the picture is what gives the player feedback that they're doing something and that they're in a menu that they're changing things. So we want to make sure that we understand pictures and how to manipulate those. We want to have a weight in here to prevent uh, immediate processing of a player's button input. If a player hits enter and the menu shows up right away and your, your finger is still just barely touching that enter, uh, they, it's going to register that you just confirmed something when you didn't. So it's important that we make sure that you are not um, still checking to see if the player has entered down the second you open that menu. Just give a little bit of a, a leeway. So I, I've thrown 15 frames here. It's a good one. Um, the more, the higher it is, the longer the delay but between your being able to press buttons and the more noticeable it is. Um, the lower it is, then the quicker it'll register and the more the player's going to get frustrated. So find a good medium. Uh, 15 was good, so I used that. Next thing you want to use is a loop. Loops are important they the core of this whole thing is a loop um, we need to constantly be checking to see if they're pressing a button to see if the we need to move a picture or things like that so we're always have a loop to be checking um endlessly just until they finally leave the menu um, so next is the we want to do a button press check uh, i have a tutorial on checking for button press make sure you go over that and understand it um, it's basically a loop, a conditional branch. Make sure you understand conditional branches. Uh, so uh, it's a loop, a conditional branch, and a wait. And we just check continuously to see if they're pressing a button down. And if they are, we do something. Um, so it's a very simple system like that. The last thing that we want to make sure we understand is common events. So we, we are going to use common events in this. It's how we're going to call menus and things like that. In this case, we are going to go ahead and create a menu. Uh, so we're going to call this character select menu. So this is the character select menu that we're going to be creating. And we're going to be calling it from this guy. Uh, there's different ways to call a common event. Um, in this case, we're going to do a simple one here where we call the common event when you hit a when you talk to this guy. Uh, so he basically manages your party. So let's see. We go to inside the event editor in event commands. We look for flow control and we go to common event and we choose the common event. So now whenever we talk to him, he's going to bring up the character select menu. Now we just have to create that menu. The first thing that we're going to do is set up our variables and then show our pictures. So our variables uh, are very simple, easy to understand variables. Uh, the first one is selector, and that's basically the number of the selector. Um, the number determines what position the selector is in. We need to keep track of the position of the selector in order to understand where it is in the menu, so that when the player confirms, they the game understands where that selector is, and then updates the game according to where that selector is. 
So it'll know that it's on player number three and that we want to change player number three by knowing where the selector is at. So in this case, selector is going to be start at one and we're going to want to make that the leftmost position in the row. So we go control variables and we set that to the first part, first position we want the selector to start at the first position we want the picture to be. So that would be 320 and then we're going to do another one that is 96. Uh, and that's going to be the Y position. So the Y is the up down, X is left to right. We want to make sure that it's at the farthest left position um, where we want it on the screen. 320 is a good spot, so we're going to put it in the 320 spot. Uh, we can change this if we need to. So next is uh, we want to put the pictures in a correct spot. So the first picture we're going to go ahead and show um, is the selector. So we're gonna put the selector uh, in a position. If we are using parallax mapping, make sure that you don't put the position number of the, you don't wanna use the wrong number. If you use the wrong number and erase one of your parallax parts, you might end up with some bugs. So make sure that you set a good number, uh, a good set of numbers for this menu. So 90 is a good high number. Uh, the higher the number, the more pictures it's gonna be on top of. So 90 is gonna be on top of pictures one through 89. Um, we wanna make sure our selector is always on top. Uh, you want it to be above the parallax, but if you have something say like an overlay, you wanna make sure that the selector is below the overlay. Um, so always have your overlays be the topmost position and your selectors be below that. And then below the selectors at a lower number is the uh, pictures that make up the menu. So now we have the selector at 90. Um, we're going to want to put the X and the Y position as the selector X and selector Y. So now it started start right where it needs to be. 90 uh, X, Y, everything looks good. It's going to start at 320 X and 96 Y. Um, we're going to also make our first picture there as well. So we're going to want to make our first picture um, right here, we're going to use this uh, as a default picture. I, I don't want to make a million pictures, so this will work. So that is going to be, we're going to want it to be above parallaxes just in case. So we're going to go ahead and do position 10 for that picture. So it's going to start at 10. Uh, the next one's going to be 11, 12, 13, etc. So oops, not what I wanted. So 10, 11, 12, 13. We're going to make five of these. So 11, 12, 13, and 14. That's one, two, three, four, and five. All right, perfect. Um, so now uh, we, this is all gonna start at the same position. That's that's kind of, oh, I messed up. Okay, anyways, uh, so we wanted to start at the selector X and the start selector Y. Um, the first picture is going to start there. Uh, now there's there's a nice little shortcut that we can do uh, in this selector tutorial. You can see that we just put it manually 96, 164, 232, 300, and then we just updated it sort of according to where we wanted each button to be on the screen. In this one, we can actually just use selector X and selector Y, and then we can just update the X position by adding about uh, the, the, the amount apart you want it to be. So you want to make sure that the amount apart for each picture is greater than the picture size. So if our picture is 96 width, we wanna make sure that the pictures are spaced out 96 or more apart because otherwise they'll just be overlapping each other. Uh, these ones are 48, so we're gonna use a, uh, we're just gonna increase it by 48 times two so that they're not right next to each other. They're about one uh, extra picture in between. Um, give them a little bit more space. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, this one is going to be selector X, selector Y, and then we're gonna update that. Uh, so we're gonna put those in between each of these. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and update X, Y. Because we're increasing it by 96 each time and then putting it uh, into the position, um, it's gonna think that it's well, it's gonna know it's updating. So we're gonna know we're going from 320 to the 90, next 96 more to the right, 
96 more to the right, 96 more to the right, 96 more to the right, uh, until finally we have all our pictures in place. So that's pretty much what we've done right here. Looks good, everything's set up. Next we want to let's see, reset, select our X back to its default position. Uh, we want the X to be exactly where it was when we first started so that the game knows we're uh, still in the, the right selected position, that, that, you know, 320 part. Uh, so next we go ahead and create our loop. Uh, we want to make sure there's weight before the loop, so we also do that. We go ahead and put a 10 second weight, should be good. Uh, we throw in a weight for our conditional branch. And we want to check if a button is being pressed. So there are better ways to do button press checks for menus. Um, we, you have to learn some scripting before we do that. And later on, we'll go into scripting. So there's some cool advanced stuff we can do with custom menus and scripting. We just have to get through the scripting. And I'll start making tutorials for that soon here, as well as art ones. Uh, but for now, let's work with what we have. Uh, so you want to check for left button press and right button press as well as the confirm which is our okay and our cancel which is you know cancel so the easiest one to start on is cancel you just want to break the loop um, so this will uh, exit the loop and leave here and we can create some uh, leaving conditions um, the most important thing is we want to get rid of all the pictures and that's all, all we really have to do. So we do 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, as well as 90. So we're, we're cleaning out all these pictures uh, so that we, they're not showing anymore when we leave. Uh, and then we can just give a, a small weight of about maybe 10 frames just to just in case um, some button input might mess things up. So we'll just put a, a quick weight frame and then everything should be good. Um, that's pretty much all we need for this. Everything's cleaned up after this. So our cancel and our end part is done. Um, so next we want to fix the left and the right. The left, we just need to make sure that we are decreasing or increasing the variable according to the you know default position and where you want it to move. So if, it, if you're moving left across the screen, you usually, uh, and your starting position is the leftmost, you want to make sure you're going down because you're moving left and that's heading towards that default start position, which is the lowest number, one. So always be going down in that case. Subtract one. So we're going down, uh, it's, that means right is going up. And we wanna make sure the X position of our selector is being updated. So X is going up or down 96. We wanna make sure it's going up 96 if it's going right. So if it's going right, it's moving this way. Uh, this is always positive. This is always down or negative We're we're subtracting. So we're going left we're going down in the x-coordinate so we subtract we're going right we go up in the x-coordinate and we add uh, same with the selector if we start at the leftmost part uh, we're going up in numbers so we go one two three four five if we're going left we're going down one two or five four three two one so it's, it's just simple just picture it in your head and it'll make a lot of sense um, we're gonna go ahead and also update the picture after we've updated, you know, the um, position of the selector. So we're going to want to move our picture number 90, which is our selector, to the new X and Y position that it should be at. So we're going to do X and Y, and we're going to have maybe a five, uh, five frame movement. So it's going to move five real fast. Um, so over five frames, it's going to move to its new position. We want to uncheck wait for completion because we want to make sure it gets all the way to its position before it starts reg registering more button presses. Uh, so in this case, we uh, update both of these and it should work. And we also want to throw an extra wait in there about five to 10 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and make this one five. 
So an extra five seconds after it's landed to wait a little bit more before the next button press. That way it's not moving too fast. It's not updating faster than the player can remove their butt, their finger from the button. Um, so just get a little bit of leeway here should work out really well. The next thing is um, creating a uh, the, the, the boundaries. We know that if the selector is less than one, we're outside of the boundary. We need to get back to where we should have been. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and create some boundaries. Conditional branch variable. We're going to check to see if the selector is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to one. Uh, in this case, we're going to see if you're inside the boundaries. So if you're greater than or equal to one, you can uh, change it so that you're, you can go left. So it'll update uh, as long as you're greater than one. So once you hit one, um, actually, you know what, greater than one. That's how boundaries work, sorry. So as long as you're greater than one, so you're not at the starting position, uh, you can go lower. Uh, if you're at the starting position, we don't want you to keep going to the left. So we say, hey, stop it. You know, don't update it, don't do this. Uh, you're not gonna be doing what's inside here because you're, you're at uh, one or less. Um, if you're at one, don't go left. Uh, so uh, this is checking that. Uh, this is a very nice, simple, clean way to check it. Um, there's there's different ways to do it. Uh, this is probably the cleanest way if you have a simple left to right one row uh, system. Uh, same with one column. So we're gonna go ahead and create the same thing. Selector is less than five, which is the, the number of options we have in the menu. So if it's less than five, it should be able to go right. If it's five, uh, you shouldn't keep be able to keep going right. And this is what is determining how what goes right. So hey, don't do this because we're not we're at five. Don't do it anymore. Uh, that's what we're saying here. Um, that's what the if then thing, uh, if then or if statement the conditional branch uh, does. So this is a good way to keep things inside of the boundaries. The next thing we need to set up is a um, co confirmation and enter. Uh, so if we hit enter, um, the player will change something. Uh, so in this case, we have a character menu. Um, we're going to make it so that if you want to remove or add uh, a player, we just check to see if that player is in our party. So we'll check to see if Harold is in the party. Uh, if he is, we're going to go ahead and change we're gonna if he's in the if he's in the party we're gonna go ahead and remove him from the party so remove Harold if he's in the party uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and make the picture we're gonna tint the picture uh, a different color so picture tin is going to be Harold's picture we're gonna make it Sapia so we're gonna Sapia it uh, so we also want to throw in a else statement so uh, if Harold is not in the party we're gonna add Harold um, so we're gonna go ahead and add Harold change party member Harold we're gonna add him and we're gonna change the picture we're gonna tint it back to normal so normal um, over we're gonna say one frame don't wait one frame don't wait uh, so we're gonna also throw in a wait here to keep button pressing from messing up. So there we go, a nice wait in there. Uh, this is a nice simple way to toggle. Um, we wanna make sure we check also in these buttons. So we're gonna do a easy conditional branch. We're gonna say, hey, if Harold is in not in the party, um, in the party, uh, if Harold is not in the party, we have to create an else branch. So if Harold is not in the party, uh, we're going to tint the picture, tin, um, tint picture tin with Sapia. One, no wait. So, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much how it's gonna work. Uh, if Harold is in, not in the party, we tint picture. Um, we're gonna wanna do that after the uh, show picture. So we're gonna do that. Uh, we're going to do that for each of these two. So tint picture 11. Um, and that's if 
Theresa is in the party and uh, actually you know what? it's there's no real major need to do this uh, out like right next to each other so we're gonna go ahead and make it so that they're all sort of in the same area 12 is going to be Marsha and 13 is Lucius and since we don't have a fifth we're gonna go ahead and add one real quick so change to five and blah 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 uh, blah 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 perfect looks great uh, class doesn't matter uh, everything looks good great guy great guy this guy so um, Gonna go ahead and jump back over to common events. Uh, and we're gonna make one more for our fifth party member. And we're gonna wanna change 14 to Sabia. So uh, if the player is not in the party, then of course the picture will be Sapia'd. Uh, and if they um, are, it's just gonna be normal. We don't have to really do anything for normal. So we're gonna go ahead and create a one for each of these. So if Harold Therese is in the party, change 11. Otherwise, change 11. By the way, we have to update this. We kind of made that one wrong. Uh, and then we just do Therese. And we should, at the end of this, have a very simple, um, very simple sort of menu. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up real quick. It is just repetitiveness. And then we're going to test it and take a look. All right, guys, uh, I've done it. The character select is all set up. Whenever I in hit enter, it should toggle the um, buttons on and off. Uh, and it should also make it so that the party member is the correct party member is in the party or out of the party. So we're going to go ahead and test that out. Uh, sorry if it's a little loud. I'm going to go ahead and turn it down a little bit. I know how loud these can be. Uh, no. So, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, we're going to go ahead and talk to our uh, menu guy. We're going to get the uh, menu up. <laughs> As you can see, it's in the wrong position. Uh, ooh. Uh, so, ooh. I need a, first off, I need a bigger delay between each button press. Cause it's way too like, like if I am just barely pressing it, it's like, oh, hey. So, so first off, we're gonna need to make a bigger weight. Um, that's, that's pretty clear. Uh, next, um, it, it's, it's definitely not centered where we want it to be. So let's go ahead and fix that. Um, let's see, we'll, we'll try it out real fast though. So on, ooh. That's weird. We're getting some crazy stuff right now. Uh, <laughs> huh. Something, uh, something's amiss here. So we're gonna look into this a little more. We're gonna take a look to see what's with the bugs. Um, first off, let's go ahead and change this number to be a little lower. We're gonna go ahead and do, uh, what's half of what we got here, 240. Uh, we're going to go ahead and split the difference and say 275. Nah. 274? 274. So 274. That should fix those two. Um, so now that's all set up. Uh, so next is the weight between left and right button press. Uh, we're gonna up that. Uh, this greater than one. We're gonna wait. Mm, let's say fifteen. Well, I'm gonna double check to see what I have here. I feel like that's gonna fix it up a little bit. So we have wait ten. So it's about fifteen. Uh, if we move picture and wait for button press there. So move picture. Uh, yeah, about fifteen looks good. I'm gonna update that. So obviously, five frames is not enough. Uh, that's probably because I didn't put wait for completion like I should have. Um, 
So let's see, wait for completion and let's say seven frames. We're gonna just kind of see where we can get a lower number on this wait for completion. So that's, that's one of the things I obviously did wrong is the left and right here uh, needs to be fixed up. And there's obviously a problem where um, but this starts out fine. So I'm not too worried about this. Uh, the colors are correct here in the if Harold isn't party. So let's go ahead and see where I messed up here. If Harold is in the party, then we remove Harold. That's correct. Uh, that's what we want. Uh, and we subpoena the picture, which is correct. That's what we want. And we wait about 10 frames. Seems right to me. Uh, change party member. Uh, you know what? Let's up, up this to about 15. I don't want the confirm to be uh, too fast. Otherwise, we're just toggling on rapidly. Uh, and like I said, there is a much better way to do the whole um, wait for button press that's so much better than this current system. Um, we'll go over that very soon here, but for now, this is what we got, so this is what we're using. Um, when, when we learn just a little bit more about scripting, we'll, we'll be able to jump into it. And it'll, it'll be very basics of scripting. Um, it'll be so easy, anybody can do it. Uh, tint picture. So that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, that's correct, and that's correct. So number 10 is Harold. That is correct. So we know Harold is 10. Uh, so this should all be correct. Uh, we add him, we remove him. We, if Therese is in the party, we remove Therese. Uh, we tint the picture, otherwise, yep. Everything looks like it's correct. So we're gonna go ahead and play with it with the new weights. It could have just been a simple matter of the weights being a little bit out of whack. Um, so let's see how much more responsive and how much uh, better it is now. So we're going to start talk to him. Uh, so first off, uh, it's it's a slightly less responsive, but it's also a lot more responsive. So this definitely works better. Um, I'm liking this. Uh, this this is a, about the right delay you want. I can still I kind of still do some weird uh, speed things where if my finger just is is pressing it down too long it registers and I don't want that but you know right now where it's at is good enough for what we got so uh this is correct we have him in the party we don't need it subpoenaed but if we add this uh what why is my party all weird okay so it's correct now but it does weird things where it reverses huh I wonder if this is a bug with adding to party or removing from party or if, oh, no, I know what's the problem. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's fix this. Uh, I know exactly what went wrong. Um, so we do not have it in the selector position. We're not checking to see if it's in the selector position. Um, so we need to have a conditional branch that checks the selector position uh, when we confirm. So if it's in position one, then we do the herald stuff. If it's in position two, we do the three stuff. So that's that's what we were doing wrong. We were just flipping them, flopping them off and on, off and on. It, well, it didn't make sense. Um, so according to this, we obviously want to check what position the selector's in. And then if it's in a specific position, we turn something on or we turn something off. So it's very simple. Uh, selector equals three, so we know if it's in the third uh, spot, we toggle on and off Marsha. If it's on the fourth spot, we toggle on and off um, Lucius. And as it uh, will be in the that one five. There we go. And everything looks good. Apply that. Okay, so now it should work exactly how you want it. Uh, you want to make sure in the confirm part, you always have a if uh, a conditional branch that's checking what position the selector is in. Um, so in the confirm, we check if one, two, three. We want a, a different condition for, or maybe a similar condition, but a different condition. Whatever you need 
for each and every single part of the um, for each and every single button on the menu so even if it's just a, a hey this isn't available yet e -e sort of sound uh, we still need a position uh, so let's go ahead and try it yep. looks like it works now I can turn each one on and off hmm some odd stuff here All right, on. Oh. Huh. There's still some bugs here. A um, little bit of debugging and I'm sure it'll work. Um, I don't wanna get too into it because then, you know, what am I doing? Uh, I'm showing you guys <laughs> how to fix your own, uh, or how to fix my problem, not really how to fix yours. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to look through this real quick, fix it, and then I'll show you the final product. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys. Uh, so I've been over it and it doesn't appear to be a issue with my setup. My setup is fine. Uh, whatever is causing the issue has something to do with... Um, RPG Maker itself. So I, I change, I, I can tell because if I change uh, the, my party to be this guy, this guy, and let's say this guy, when I start the game, they should be in my party logically because that's just the way the game should work. Um, they're all here, they're all set fine, everything looks good. Uh, but when I start the game, You'll see it pretty soon here. Uh, when I start the game, they aren't there. So this is some sort of bug with the RPG Maker system. See, not there and not in the party. Um, so as you can see, there's some sort of bug. I, I don't know what it is, but it's just here. Um, so we're gonna just chalk this up to, you know, the system working fine, but RPG Maker MV uh, working incorrectly for whatever reason. Uh, I obviously haven't changed any plugins or anything, so it's just, a weird little you know weird little glitch uh can't really explain it so uh, otherwise no that that should work um this has been the sorry about the fact that i can't show you the changing system uh try it yourself see see how it works for you it should work fine um but sorry i couldn't show it to you uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, as always like comment subscribe uh, hopefully I'll have my Patreon coming up soon. Um, you guys, I definitely suggest uh, subscribing. Uh, I'll make sure I, I or you know, contributing to, to what I do. Um, it tells me that this is something valuable to people, that uh, game production is valuable. I'm going to be expanding very soon here into doing game design, uh, going over different ways certain popular games have been designed and created and why certain things worked uh, i'll also be going over why certain things in other games did not work um, i'll also have a personal blog up as well so all three of those things uh, i imagine can be very helpful to anybody either in my shoes in my circuit you know in the same circumstance as i am um, and also interested in game development um, so please if you if you could contribute uh, thanks again for tuning in and i will see you guys in the next tutorial <laughs>